Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, creator of the Dot Destroyer book and CEO of Romano Scientific in New York. I'd like to go over with you today something called cartilage, which is extremely important. Now, um, usually when you think of cartilage, we think of a connective tissue. And for those that don't know where your cartilage is, if you look in your throat, or you wiggle your ears, or you wiggle your nose, I feel like a goddamn high school teacher, or even a preschool teacher with you guys. But that should give you an idea of where cartilage is, all right? So think of your nose, you think of cartilage. Now, cartilage is a connective tissue of mesodermal origin, and it provides support, framework, and attachments, and protects tissues. Now, unlike bone, cartilage has no blood vessels, there's no lymphatics, and there's no nerves. Now, needless to say, there's poor regenerative power. So if you have an injury to cartilage or you're in a barroom brawl, not so good because it doesn't heal very well. So cartilage, I've read a lot of PhD papers on it, even to this day. Um, the results aren't great and it would necessitate you going to an MD and surgery and stuff like that if you have a cartilage injury. There's very slow mitotic activity. So any blood supply would be obviously from diffusion, from the nearby um, environment. But there's no blood supply in cartilage. Now what I would suggest you to do is if you have a picture in front of you, like a histology slide of cartilage so you can see all the cells. That will kind of make it more interesting. 80%, um, well actually that's the high end, 65 to 80 depending on your age, by weight is water. So mainly cartilage is water. There's three types of cartilage that we need to be familiar with. One is called hyaline, and that's the most abundant form. And that would be found in the bronchi, in the trachea. You might thank me for that someday. Make sure you know trachea is cartilage. Larynx, also surrounding the ends of bones and movable joints at the end of, ri end at the end of ribs. So you should have an idea what hyaline cartilage is. Now, elastic is the most flexible, and that's easy because focus on the E. Eustachian tube. By the way, this eustachian tube is very important. I want you to have a look at that. Um, if, you don't, if you get a chance tonight, that connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx, and that's called the eustachian tube. Then the epiglottis, that's that little flap of tissue that prevents you from aspirating fluid and the external ear. So that's kind of a score. All those E's go with elastic tissue. Then we have the least flexible tissue of all, and that's fibrocartilage. And this is where, when there's a great deal of pressure being applied, um, and you need a lot of strength. For instance, the knee joint, pelvic girdle, the intervertebral discs, that's fibrocartilage. Now, under the microscope, if you looked, you would see two main things you would see what's called a chondroblast. Now this cell is derived from the mesenchyme, and when it differentiates, it's gonna make another cell called a chondrocyte. Now these chondroblasts, when surrounded by matrix material, sit in these little lacunae. You can't miss them. So when you look at the microscope, they're all enclosed in, and when they're enclosed in, they've matured and differentiated from the chondroblast to the chondrocyte. Chondrocytes give rise to collagen, gives rise to elastin, these are the fibers you would see, the extracellular matrix, and proteoglycans. And that's always a confusing point. Proteoglycans are simply proteins that are covalently attached to one or more glycosamino chains of polysaccharides. So I want you to make sure you have an understanding of proteoglycans. So they are big proteins, but they're gonna be attached to these polysaccharides. The most abundant proteoglycan is chondroitin sulfate. You'll get into the details um, in biochemistry on this, but chondroitin sulfate is one of the most abundant of the proteoglycans in cartilage. And last but not least, um, you would also see a, a chondroclast now, just like an osteoblast, what they do is these, these are going to be involved in destroying calcified cartilage. When I was a student, all the pathology books used to just call them osteoclasts. But now they changed it to a chondroclast, and that sounds fair since it is in cartilage. But once again, these are the same type of cells that you see in bone, 
and they're the multinucleated, and they're often giant cells. You can't miss them. The only pathologies I think I would worry about for the dad involving cartilage is arthritis. If you remember, there's two types. There's osteo and rheumatoid, rheumatoid being the autoimmune disease. And as long as you understand it's the wearing away cartilage at the caps of the bones. So if you wear away the cartilage and the bone hits bone, it's going to be very tough to walk and stuff like that and to be able to move. Um, I hope this gives you some idea of, of cartilage. And next time or in the near future, we'll look at bone. But they're both important and they're fair game questions for the dad. But I think if you know what's here, I think you're set for the dad. All right, um, I'll see you next time, and we'll possibly be going over another topic such as bone. All right, bye-bye.